before we get started, uh, we do want to give just a little bit of a heads up. Some of the content that we discuss, even though we might give a trigger warning here and there, we're talking very quickly. And if you do have some sensitivity to some extreme topics, uh, this might not be the right one for you, um, including triggers that could include SI, CSA, harassment, bullying, uh, just so you have a fair warning diving into this one. All right, this can be brutal. This industry can be brutal, but I say let's get into it. Let's get deep into it, girl. Yeah. <laughs> Just like our the, heroes. Welcome to the second episode of Sex Lies and Blank Pages. Today's topic: the good, the bad, and the fucking ugly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Colleen Oppenheim. I'm the moderator of our little fun time here. And I'm Stacy Marie Brown. And I'm Willow Winters. And we're ready to go, girl. Let's yes, go. Yes, we are Let's romance author. It. Yeah, we're romance but, authors who have been in this industry for years. And from dick pics to bad reviews to ugly moments, <laughs> there's plenty. Uh, there's plenty of cons, but there's also so many pros. And there's so much progress within our yes. industry. It's it's wonderful to see, but my goodness, is it a wild ride? <laughs> and the, the fucking ugly, I'm like, you had to call me out like that? That's kind of mean. <laughs> it's a little too early for that. <laughs> I was like, so let's get into the, let's, the good. Yes. yes. Let's start with the good. Or, or should we end with the good? Maybe we're just maybe we end with, with the good. Let's, let's do the sandwich. We could do this sandwich. You know how like when you're Ooh, giving somebody criticism. I'd be in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> Well, technically, visually, you are right now. But <laughs> the way I like it. Yeah, but I think um, I think it's very obvious that this industry uplifts women, right? Yes. Like our our books uplift women, uplift a lot of people, sex education and sex positivity for both men and women, um, and it makes a very positive impact. So I'm really proud and grateful to be a part of that, um, and that I guess could be our our part of the the good sandwich but right? that house that has a flip side where oh yeah it there does still so much sexism and so much um with women i i'm mm-hmm. always kind of mm-hmm. shocked at how many women um will say that they're more like you know oh open. they're yeah and they treat like the like one of my characters I remember like they were always against her because she didn't right away fall for the guy that was been a dickhead to like you know and i'm like wait why are we always so pro man like you know like just because he one looked at her you know all of a sudden we're just supposed to you know so oh, 100%. this can be a lot of sexism within actual women too which you know mm-hmm. why we're trying to raise up and we can get into tropes and all that kind of stuff but like one of my worst trope when people talk about tropes is the virgin virgin one because I think it gives that negative that a woman still has to be pure that we have to you know that it has to be your only you're giving it away and then it's yeah your virtue is is my gift to you yes (laughs) (laughs) and we're not the same after we have sex why men like you know again I write a lot of books that the men are whores Yes. And, you know, but I've always made the girl also like, be like, she's, op- you know, like she's had sex too. It isn't that her mm-hmm. and him being a whore and her not is that, you know, I don't, that equivalently is to me. There's definitely, it, yeah, I know exactly what you're saying. And there is that judgment from readers where like your hero can fuck up over and over and over oh, again. Yeah. They like, still love him. But if she fucks up, oh, that reader would have done better. That because yeah. I think that it really I think that it's a good thing in a way because it speaks to the fact that the reader is putting themselves in her position, mm-hmm. in the heroine's position. And they're like, oh no, no, no. I am a be- I am better suited for this hero. So in yeah. some ways it's like a compliment. But those negative reviews are not <laughs> <laughs> well sometimes I think, I'm like would you have done I see I don't I feel like they wouldn't have done any different in the, her shoes. They just easy to like judge, you know, yes. like, oh, I would have yes. done that different. I'm like, would you? Yeah. Would you? <laughs> He's would been, you? A, yeah. Yeah, been a dickhead. Like if you take this guy, like he was a paranormal character, but I'm like, if you take him in romance, he would have been like your boyfriend's uncle that just got a jail and killed your friend's mom. So you just been. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so but like in yeah. that, like um, that 
kind of what we're getting the bad of it. It's just the also negative of what we get to. And that's only a drop in the bucket. It's Mm -hmm. only a drop because we are public figures. We are putting ourselves out there because we're self-published. So we're the ones who have to market it. And I was just talking to another author, Mickey Miller, who's also doing a podcast. And he said, like, are we signing up for this? And he was talking about TikTok Mm -hmm. and a lot of the negativity around it. And I was like, well, in some ways we do sign up for it. In other ways, we absolutely aren't. When people are taking our words out of context, Mm -hmm. um, like I also wrote a small town romance um, and she was like, this is sexist and put a line from the sexist person in the book to talk about the conflict the heroine's going through. And I'm like, yeah, we know she's sexist in the book. Yeah, exactly. No shit. But in the way Mm -hmm. that they say it, it doesn't read like that. And sometimes it gets really bad. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned a moment from a black romance author who I love, who's very vocal um, about racism. Mm -hmm. And somebody on TikTok took a line from her book, which was incredibly racist and said, you know, black people will never have progress because people within our community are writing. Yeah. And, and she had, I will not say her name um, because that is for her to talk about, but she had the most grace to do a response video. And she showed the full scene and was like, yes, I'm demonstrating racism because it needs to end. And, and everybody took their videos down, but the fact was it was going viral and they were calling her racist. And I actually, oh, I don't know that I should say this, but I'm going to say this. Okay. I I was, I know, right. I was sent a link one time, a TikToker called me racist and she, and I gasped because she was like, she used an African tribe and she blah, blah, blah. And with her full chest was talking about this, this scene. And I was like, did I write that? I was like, I don't, I don't recall that. Um, and she said, I'm not going to say the title of the book and she's going on and on about this. Right. And oh another God. reader messaged me, my PR messaged me. And I'm like, you know, I write mafia romances. Maybe I used a name that's similar. I'm freaking out. Right. Then a reader messages me. She's talking about a different author, but I just thought and in that moment, I was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I'm an advocate against racism. It's prevalent in not only our community, yeah. but in our culture and our country. I, it, I was like, what did I, like, I need to fit what, what did I do? Like yeah. Yeah. in my head, I was like, I must've used a name that was similar. I need to rectify this immediately. Like I have no idea what's going on. My PR is like, call your lawyers. And I'm just sitting here. Like <laughs> I did not sign up for this. Yeah. Right? Luckily, yeah. And it- your readers did comment under her video and I went against the advice of my lawyers and PR and I commented and I was like, hi, I think that you're just confusing me. And she did take her, she did take the post down. I think that it was ignorance, not malicious, right. but at the same time, like that's devastating. Mm-hmm. And like, even just sitting now, like my heart is racing. Oh, ooh, yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, mm. so I'm like, that is huge. That is like, and there are people who are licking their chops ready mm-hmm. to take me down and to destroy me yeah, like, they because are. I am an advocate, <laughs> yeah, because I am opinionated, because I speak my mind, because I write dark romance, because I write things that are somewhat controversial. Um, but going back to what we were talking about, you don't sign up for that. Right. Well, like that we is something were, that nobody yeah. expects to happen. Mm-hmm. We were at the book Bonanza on a panel and um, there was me and another author that we kind of, our books kind of came up on TikTok around the same time. Mm-hmm. And she, I didn't, it's also nice to know, like, okay, I wasn't alone. The, of course, the wonderful of, I wouldn't be where I was without TikTok, but then mm-hmm. there's the flip of it where all of a sudden people start coming at you and it's personal and it's in your box, mm-hmm. you know, they're messaging you. And um, there's a lot of people like calling me sit there going, you wouldn't realize everybody's like, oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I'm like, yeah, they, you know, like they'll tell you how to write what you should be writing, how, you know, you should go more, like more sex, you should do that. You know, it's just constant. So that is one thing we already have crippling. I mean, artists, sorry, I was an actress, all that kind of stuff. We already have crippling, like self doubt and hatred. And we're already like the worst thing you could think about yourself. We already do. Like mm-hmm. imposter to... syndrome. We, yeah. every oh, author oh, has imposter God. syndrome. Like, so you just coming at just us feels like, oh God, they found out I'm awful. Like, you know, and it really, you know, you have to kind of push through and go breathe in, breathe out, keep writing, you know, um, get through, but it, there's some days it, it totally, I, it takes me out, like cripples me. Like yeah. I have to like, I'll go cry like on a walk with my poor dog. He's just like, Oh, again. <laughs> and I think people don't realize that it does no matter what hit you. We're human. You see it. Yeah. Because oh, yeah. if they hashtag anything, you've probably created that hashtag. And yeah. if you follow it, it's going to come up on your FIP. You're going to oh, see yeah. it. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. There's Even a couple of people not tagged or yeah. if somebody comes along and is like, ha, ha, I want this person to see it because I hate her. Oh, you know? there's and definitely the people that definitely there's people that want to punish you. They read oh, the book and, they, you yeah. know, and, and again, we're not saying reviews are for you guys. That mm-hmm. is fine. But when you personally like tag us and make sure that we see it, it's kind of mm-hmm. like, I didn't like this book and you are going to know it. And I'm going to make you pay for this. Like, you know, and it's like, like put it on, put it on Amazon, put it on the retailers, but right. you don't yeah. need to message it us repeatedly. Yeah. You don't need to tag us repeatedly. Like, we don't, yeah. yeah. Well, you don't need to do that. You can, it's just that, you know, then I am a human being and my response is probably going to be like, right. you know, to un, untag myself and probably unfollow or, or block depending yeah. on what's written, especially if it attacks me as a human, right? right. Like just, people like go human feral. Decency. Yeah. yeah. It's this human decency that behind the screen, they feel they have so full rights to you about, I've gotten mm-hmm. pictures of like, you need to write this type of character. And you're like, that's yeah. not how I work. That's not even how I work with myself. Yeah, um, And you're talking about your books right now, but there yeah. has been a movement that has become very dark and very ugly where mm-hmm. controversy goes viral and people will Negative. decide yeah. that, yeah, they will decide that they can say something about you that puts you below human. Right. And, and call you names and say you're a terrible this or that. And then they use their platform to produce hate against you as a person. And I have experienced that. I stood up oh, for somebody who was being lied about. Should and we they decided, that? should we go, yeah, go into your toxic? It. Let's go yeah, for it. We it told we were going to get so dirty. Toxic. Yes. It's well, so it's not toxic. Even, it's more just like acknowledging that like, like you're get you do get punched in the face and against like mm-hmm. are you signing up for this right like I stood up for somebody who's being lied about in return they lied about me um and it was devastating like getting told to go on a live myself every two minutes on Instagram in their DMs on Instagram um and it was like like it was and getting their little squat at you and oh one hundred percent and like it's absolutely devastating and what people don't know what readers don't know is PR says be quiet lawyers say, Mm -hmm. be quiet. Your team says, be quiet. And I run an empire. So I have so many people who I provide for. And I know that they're, I know that what they're saying is true, right? That the truth always comes out. And Mm -hmm. what my lawyer says is you can't cancel people with lies. It was literally the best year that I'd ever had because it's so much attention. And they're like, what the fuck? Like, who is this? Um, And then you stay in their feet and you stay in their mind and everything. So in all in all, like you get this pro because you're in the public eye, but the con is you take punches to the face. Right. Like, well, and you've been labeled yeah. as a toxic author by yes. some. And I love and when I yes. hear from um you know, like TikTok on TikTok, people that I know don't know you, but they've heard yeah. from somebody else and heard from somebody else that you're this person. And I'm like, but you don't know her. You right. don't know. Well, not story. only that, but so people just comment. Like, ah. I've seen the comments of like, well, I've seen that she's problematic. What exactly did she do? Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, just uh, because you decide you don't like somebody doesn't yeah. mean they're problematic. And I like, think I would respect these people more if they would message you and be like, well, you have a conversation oh, hell no. with me. No, yeah. they just blocked a post lies. Yes. Like, and, and what they, like, they lied and it didn't work and they lied and it didn't work. And then they used a lie that was disgusting. And this is where it's a little bit of a trigger warning. Yeah. You know, I post therapy type stuff on my Twitter and I posted something about my stepfather in a very vague way, right? This is my problem. This is why we are it's like, never again, never again. <laughs> because if you post something that's not specific, they can use it and they can twist it yes. just like they can do within your books. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and they did. And eventually the truth does always come out. Thank mm-hmm. God. Um, and people always show themselves for who they are and I'm incredibly transparent and I'm not going anywhere. Um, but my God, it can be a horrible, horrible yes. experience, especially when they go for things that they know mm-hmm. are going to hurt you. And that is, mm-hmm. I don't know whether or not it's their tension. I know that things can be posted in bad faith. Sometimes it's ignorance. So I try not to judge people, but I do know like I'm on my journey and it's very easy for me to just delete block and move the fuck on because mm-hmm. I can't control somebody else's journey. Right. Right. And then, um, and that's the becomes, part that sucks. Yeah. It became easy for them. Cause I know there was another oh, yeah. situation with this audio thing, like, oh, um, yeah, but it, you became bullshit. an easy target. And it and was like lie on target. top of lie. Yeah, I did. And yeah. I was like, my uh, PR at the time was like lay low. And I was like, I just posted three tech talks and I'll be continuing to post. I was like, yeah. I am not yet. I, I was like, at this point, like they but can say weird. what they're going to say. They can do what they're going to do. I'm going to do me. Because mm-hmm. all like, like, if you want to look into it, you can look into it and see that there's nothing there. I think it's human nature able. to want to want to protect defend yourself. yourself. I mean, because- that's the part that sucks. And this is why I say, like, I know that my team loves me. I know that what they're saying is right. <laughs> but the little person, like the little girl inside of me is like, you'll stand up for everybody yeah. else, but not yourself. Right. And like yeah. that hurts. 
that absolutely hurts. Um, but then, you know, what makes sense is like, why are you feeding trolls mm -hmm. when you have an audience who is benefiting so much from what you're doing and you're taking your light away from that? And that is like a very difficult mind shift to make where like right. you have to look like, like these people who are like, she said, she hopes he goes, gets hit by a bus. Yeah. I'm talking about my <laughs> trigger warning, my stepfather who molested me. And they said, it's about this person. No, it's about this person. No, it's about all of these followers. No, it's about all of book talk. And they could take that and they could use it for whatever mm -hmm. they wanted. And they're using a very emotional moment for me where I'm struggling mm -hmm. with forgiveness and coping and because I'm no contact with multiple members of my family and people who are viewing their posts, they don't know any of that. Yeah. And a lot of them, they don't care. And in terms of my they audience, like the views. Yeah. exactly. It's for the views. It's for the followers. Mm -hmm. It's for the drama of it all. And it's like, what do I want to give my audience? Right. You know, do I want to lean on them when I'm having my, my moments or do I want to provide for them? And I'm an acts of service love language. So I'm always going to try to provide, but it was hard. Yeah. Like it's oh, so I mean, hard to not go in. How, it's also, yeah, it's my response, my natural response. Somebody it'd be mine too. I'd be like, what are you talking about? Yeah, of course. Huh. Not be anybody out there would also say the same. And so when we're treated that we can't, yeah. we have to stay silent and we have to just take it. And the, and they're kind of like again, like everybody in celebrity level, and we're not like I'm not saying that, but they're just kind of like you, yeah. you, you got this. Like You're in the this public is eye. You deserve, deserve. Yeah, yeah. Right. You, you deserve you knew, this. You signed up for and, this. I'm like, it's still a natural I, response to want to protect ourselves. Yeah. Like, but it's it only, tough. you only have to give them, them that one little piece. Yeah, they exactly. They have to be right to the rest of you. Right. They're, no one has the right to all of you. That's what's hard yeah. though, because I want to give them. So I think that a lot of authors feel this way. We want to give right. them all of us. We want to show because our art comes from us. Mm -hmm. right? Like there's a reason I write dark romance and it right. is helping me on my journey and it's helping other people on their journey. So I want to give them all. And the fact that like, I have to be careful about what I tweet late at night when I'm drinking and in my feels, even <laughs> oh, if, because yeah. if it's vague sweet, book sweet and it's supposed to be helpful and it can't, you can't do that. You, right. and, and that sucks. It, it really does suck. So like, you know, I, I often message Sophie, like the post that I made today, um, mm -hmm. about it was, uh, I just talked about it in the previous episode about the, the YouTuber who said, you know, great, you can read your uh, porn in public, but men are ashamed for it or shamed for it. I had to push that past my husband and then Sophie, because I'm yeah. like, this could be construed as it could be controversial, not yeah. educational. And I don't mean it to be contra controversial. I mean it to be educational, but it's also emotional. Mm -hmm. And my God, when you pump emotions into a social media outlet that thrives off of controversy, that has Ooh, people yeah. so they, excited to go viral. They love to flip it. Yeah. They yes. want to flip it. They want yes. to take it. Drives, it. So it drives comments. It drives yeah. engagement. Yeah. So I always oh. want to do, especially for other readers, like just not I, and research is a weird word, but look, when you hear a rumor, make sure that you know the truth before you start yes. getting on and spouting the same stuff and just following yeah. along, you know, because right. it might Don't, not be true. It's not know? because I, so and so's brothers, uncles, second said cousin so. said so. Yeah. It's yeah. because you've actually know this person. Know it. Like, yeah, and yeah. yeah. and I like, like anything in life. And standing yeah. up for what you believe in is something that we the that we have done. And I, I mm -hmm. fully believe in it and I'll continue to do it. Um, but like we were just talking about with that that first TikToker, that's kind of a big fucking deal. Like, yeah. like, yeah. like make like, sure you know what you're talking about. And if you that, ask somebody and they're yeah. like, do your own research, like you should they should be able to provide you with a direction yes. as to who has well, what. And because the one reader off of that review will see that. And even if they read that it wasn't you, that's still right. in their head. And for some yeah. reason, sometimes they'll still carry on with, oh, she's a racist. And you're like, wait, what the it fuck? was proven that yeah. she wasn't, yeah. <laughs> but it's, to, you know, it's just, yeah. again, it, it's, that's the ugly of this. But then the beauty of this is the, the readers, the followers that are there telling you like, you know, like you just reading your book helps me get through the day. And I'm like right. this, it, all that stuff washes away. You know, when it, we it get does. To... And you're always going to have the negative, right? You're yes. always going to have people who hate it. You're always going to have people who I write dark romance. So people who think that the content is harmful, you're always going to have people who it, it, just see your face and they don't like you. They hear your voice right. and they don't like you. They look at your title and they think it's awful. They look at your cover and they say it's ugly. And, right. uh, and people who like, there's always going to be that aspect of it. But like we talked about in our first episode, 
it really is a small percentage. They just right. get a very loud voice loud. Yeah. on TikTok, which is a new platform. Right. And, you know, that it has an ability to go viral on your first post without any credibility, just because you're voicing something and there is no fact checking about what they're voicing. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I want to pop in and on like a PR marketing type of thing for these people, um, opinions are like assholes. Everyone has one. <laughs> yes. And opinions and, and thoughts aren't facts. Right. No. And, and your emotion on that is not fact. Yeah. Do mm-hmm. this post that may harm, do more harm than good. I want people, and if nothing else comes out of all of this, and people are like, she needs to shut the fuck up. <laughs> I want people I get that daily. to to stop and think about the fact that this is going to be here forever. This is your brand. Even as a book talker, bookstagrammer, you are building a brand and a business. You are, whether you want to or not, if you have a loud enough voice, you're building this brand in this business. So what you say will affect your brand forever. Yeah. Yeah. So if you come out of the gate throwing punches and being negative, that's what you're going to be known for. And you're not going to be able to go back. There's a TikToker who I love. And she says, how you get them is how you keep them. Exactly. And it's so true. So all of these, like I've seen so many of these like book talkers who fling crap all over the place and are so brutal and ruthless. And then they're like, I'm an author. And then their books feel happy. I love those. I'm like, they have a huge following, but their books don't get movement. And it's like, well, the people following you are following you for the hate that you're spewing. And and people feed off of hate, which is- they do. Absolutely. Like it hurts my heart because I try and be a positive person. I mean, sometimes I'm like the grumpy old troll, but, oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but positivity gets you more traction it and it feels good. I it love does. it. It feels yeah. good. Like, I, I don't know why being negative, it just, it sits right. in you and it just, uh, yes, you'll and, get that little high from all yes. those views you got, but who yeah. did you hurt along the way? And then exactly. your brand, like you said, like, yeah. and people make lists. People make lists. Oh, they're marketing. <laughs> well, it's, it's in yeah. here. In the it's in there. Industry, yeah. especially in the industry, there's lists. Like yeah. you might not know about it, but there's lists. Yeah. <laughs> but so we have all of these pros, though, all these life changing yes. pros. Like yeah. I, oh. you know, I'm this. Like this business is what fuels my entire household. I'm creating an empire. I'm employing yeah. so many people. I'm giving them opportunities that they wouldn't have otherwise. I'm reaching right. all these women. So you can't have these pros without right. having these cons. And that's kind of like how I look at it. I'm like, I'm mm-hmm. gonna like I've been punched in the face before when I've spoken up against racism, against homophobia. I'm going to be punched in the face for writing dark romance. I'm going to be punched in the face for all sorts of things. It's like, I'll just, I can have the bruises on this side, and but I'm going to be smiling on both sides. Yeah. Like, that's just the but, way it is. And I want to say the one comment about the guy sitting in porn. I'm like, he can sit out there and read a book. Like, it's funny. Yeah. The equivalent is like a guy would be shamed. I'm like, he could. And I love the wave of, um, especially boyfriends the or male. husbands that are reading the I romance love it. now. And I'm like, yes. Oh my God, I love you guys. And I think that should be a positive thing. I saw some trying to make it a negative thing, but oh my God, why not? It's a whole new audience. And- I don't, yeah, and it's I don't sex know education. Will. One thing in our culture yes. that is so lacking, and this is, it brings in some of the cons because of misinformation and because of a lack of sex positivity, but like sex education is so lacking. So to have, you know, women finding pride yes. in it and self-love and realizing what they want, and then to have men come along partners right. or single or what, whoever, whoever, just people in general, loving yeah. the idea of pleasure and falling in love and the consent and the respect and, and understanding healthy relationships. Yes. But I, and I think though, amazing. a lot no of these guys are, love. yeah, I think these guys are also finding that there's a story like these, mm-hmm. you know, cause they're yeah. always talking about these big man fantasy authors or whatever it is. And they're finding like, Oh, this is just my wife's smut. And then they start reading it going, this is fucking good. <laughs> hard, you know, I'm like, you can take all my sex away. And I still have a story that, yes. you know, yes. that's, you know, political, it's intrigue, it's murder, it's mystery. You know, it has all of that layers. And I, it just, so I think they're also reading it and going, oh, okay, this is actually, yeah. I can see why, you know, um, one girl kept sending me her husband's responses and he's getting the third book and he's like, damn, 
you know, and I'm like, I love this. This makes me like, it makes my day that, you know, I, the more men that reading these books, right. uh, yes, bring Agreed. it on. Agreed. And I think yes. that, that is going to be our next wave. Like the romance genre is only growing and I love yes. that. And we're going to get pushback. We're going to get people who have, like, we talked about like the boot on the neck in the first episode where the misogyny that's ingrained in us, like we're going to get that pushback. We're going to have these moments, but we're, that's because we're growing. Right. Yes. We yeah. got, and, and we're making the progress and we're making the You only the get pushback is when you become a threat. And that yes. usually when your threat is when you are, you know, you're starting to take over just yeah. like the houses are with indie authors. They, they'll yes. try to push us every which way. And we're like, sorry, we're you here to anymore. stay. We're too big. Yeah, yes, we are. We are here no, to we're stay. We're here to stay. Yeah. yeah. And um, I mean, Barnes and Nobles realized that they're like, why are we mm-hmm. ignoring this huge market mm-hmm. of, you know, money and stuff like that? Now they're really introducing the TikTok indie authors into their work. Oh, but then bring in TikTok though, where you have these readers who are going viral because they're joking about stealing from Barnes and Noble and the oh. books that they're reading are the books that are going viral. So now you have Barnes and Nobles that are losing money for purchasing indie authors and they're no longer have nice out. stuff why yeah. can't we have nice stuff yeah. like, we stop. literally can't my barnes and yeah. noble can't put out the romance indie authors for certain authors who are, are viral right now because too many copies are stolen so they can't they have the little profit. jack you know what is those little jack low jack those little <laughs> things. they are they're putting them on books oh they're God, putting them people, in the books yeah stop i know this is why right? you and can't like, have nice stuff yeah. mm-hmm. it's because it's a trend on tiktok because one person went viral doing it so now they're all yeah. going in well, and it's doing like piracy it. went viral for a while and it, it was so it, it, it still is. oh that it still was an is. ugly that was yeah. a huge ugly and yeah. i made a post on yeah. it i was like look my book just got taken down from amazon i have to prove copyright because somebody pirated it like mm-hmm. it's not okay there are free books there are ways that you can get any book that you want Libby yes, Libby. yes. Yeah. Libby hoopla digital libraries what like whatever like like there are ways you could read a book a day every single day for the rest of your life and whatever genre you want to read for free just mm-hmm. because authors put them for free but they want the book that they want right now right then right right then and, and then they always um, use the excuse of like oh they're expensive or them like yeah yeah but you're just taking somebody's livelihood away not just ours so they like don't want to believe that people, though you know they don't want to believe yeah. that there's a negative impact they don't want to believe that there's harm in it and that was one thing that went viral on tiktok and i made my post and i was like look see piracy does harm authors and i had a commenter who said how dare you speak against piracy i will never read your books and all i could think is okay, i'm really gonna I... miss that stolen copy <laughs> <laughs> oh sorry, darn Wait. Oh God! Gosh, I hope PR doesn't PR doesn't ding me on that one. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, and then, <laughs> no, and the people uh, yeah. that provide links to for like, oh, go download it here, and you're oh, like, 100%. I'm sitting, I can see you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I think was one thing that Sean says all the time. My husband is Sean, is don't attribute malice to ignorance, and I do think that there's a lot of ignorance, but there's a lot of selective ignorance. Yes, there's a lot of attack somebody if they say something I want to do doesn't this, fit our so narrative. I don't want to think about if it fits their bad. narrative, yeah. it's okay. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So, yeah. so that's just another ugly that we have to. It's ex- like boom, boom, boom. It's you the hit good, it left the right bad. And center. I can handle the good, you know, of course we can handle the good. I mean, yeah, well, all day, but, every day, I, please. <laughs> and I can handle the bad. It's the fucking yeah. ugly that I feel like, yeah, holy crap, this is, did we sign up for this? Like, you right. know, yes, this yeah. job comes with the good and bad. And like, if anybody takes out of the context that we are not saying reviews, no, you can go on TikTok. You can say your piece. That is not what we're saying. Right. You know, mm-hmm. it's just, there is a definite trend on TikTok now to be purposely harmful. To be yes. because you want the likes and you yeah. want the like, ooh, I am not standing out enough. And there's it's always- virtue signaling. It, it's yeah, a virtue and signaling and creating a demon out of somebody who's a human because you decided that you could probably maybe do this because they might have somewhat done this. Mm-hmm. Like, and it's like, that's not progress. That's not accountability. Yeah. It's abuse. And, yeah. and I don't think that we sign up for abuse, but at this point in my career, I know that that's going to happen. Oh, yeah. And I it's, intend to just yeah. get bigger. I'm not going anywhere. So again, I'll, I'll take the bruises on this side. Yeah. Like, yeah. I think hit what me, people don't right realize <laughs> is that just, just they're here. still talking yeah. about you. So more people oh, yeah. are still noticing you mm-hmm. and it's just building you up. More. And then they come and see me and they can see what I stand for and they yes. can see what, what I'm about. And right. it's like, like, I'm going to, I, I I'll, I'll take it left, right. And center. Cause mm-hmm. I can hit delete. I can hit block and I can keep going. And on my, again, like part of it is therapy and like being like a, a more, 
I don't want to say stable person because I do come from a, a there's some trauma. Yeah. There's some trauma in my upbringing, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's a reason I'm no contact with immediate family members, right? And it's a, a, you're able to kind of, you you know, you learn and you grow and you heal through writing. Mm-hmm. And then in real life, when you're hit with these other things, you're able to also do the same. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not the best. <laughs> it's definitely not the best. No. Um, but I like doing the shadow work. I like identifying when somebody, you know, comes for me, I don't have to respond. Right. I can, I can be like, excuse me, I'm doing something that's more important and that's beneficial to so many other people. And you don't like, that doesn't matter. Like mm-hmm. I'm not going to engage with bad faith. And that's something that a younger me would never do. Oh, I would turn around and drag. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, so, uh, you know, there's, there's definitely some positives to even the negatives that you don't yes. expect, but the negatives can really hit you hard sometimes. Yeah. But it's just funny as I think that's why we make a good combo. I'm so under like, so drama free. Like I always yeah. have been, I'm like, <laughs> okay. Um, and Colleen, I out, what like, is this? I don't know. No, I don't I'm, look. Every <laughs> drama, I'm like going to her going, what is going on? Like, yeah. I have no clue. Cause I'm not, I've always kind of kept to myself. I'm kind of what the people call a chameleon. Like I get along with everybody, but then people kind of like when we're out at events and so like that people forget like to invite me anywhere because it's like, oh, oh Stacy, you know, like I'm just <laughs> uh, everywhere, but I don't, I've drama's never been, I think people like reality shows and stuff like that. They get off on that. I very, very uncomfortable. I get, it, it makes me feel icky. So yeah. I tend to just kind of keep a little to myself. People know about me, but I, I don't think they could really dig. There's stuff that's happened in my past too that like they don't know about, you know, so I tend I, to keep- I put my shit on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm the opposite and I don't, but you probably get more response because I'm a little bit more reserved because I'm like, mm-hmm. Ooh, I want to make so- a, a positive impact in every way that I can. And I want to be yeah. transparent and share. And speaking about reality shows, like- you know, I had somebody come to me and ask, do you want to? And I was like, yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. Show this life, show this impact, show what it can do. Like not just as an author, but as a reader, like, like I, I feel like the more you can acknowledge things and the more you can shine a light on things, like the more positivity yeah. will grow. And it, again, it's going to come with some hurdles and some hiccups and some, yeah. some, cause I see noses. that more of a documentary to me, reality shows yeah. says like, oh, they want the drama, the flipping mm-hmm. the tables. I'm right, like, and right. then I'm like, yeah, come into my life and watch me sit alone all day. <laughs> <laughs> A you lead a such a, like, you oh. lead a fabulous yeah. life though you have like such a, a amazing life though right. like oh, it, I, i'm yeah. very lucky like I, yeah. the traveling like if i'm not you know writing my like world that i'd rather live in i'm traveling and i love that so yeah and, and so my many dog. people <laughs> would find it like admirable and an escape in and of itself like we mm-hmm. really are like with, with all the good, the bad, with all the bad and the ugly, the good just outweighs yes, so, yes. so much. It's just a matter of navigating it all. I once described this industry as like, like you're in a pool and there's a whole bunch of dicks everywhere and you just got to wade through them. Like, just try to keep your mouth yep. shut. And, um, <laughs> Sounds like my dating life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still waiting though. I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh that's too small. Oh, you're cute. Keep, just keep swimming. Just, just, just <laughs> literally. <laughs> so no, I think that way that good. I mean, th- we wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here if the good did not weigh tenfold. Definitely. And so if we want to get into the good, um yeah, I let's mean, get into the good because yes. we just talked about a whole bunch and of I that. I have a question for you both when you oh, talk then about go, that. For go, ahead. Ahead. Hit us with go for it. Hit us with it. Go for it. So yeah. I want to know what the most positive interaction you've ever Ooh. had with <gasps> either a Ooh. reader, another author, there's so um, many anyone in I the know. industry, but there's there or any, any positive. Okay, I but can't name one. kind of made an impact on you and made your I heart mean, kind of sing. I mean, like, I'm going to oh, say, okay. I'm going to say it's very favoritism, but Sophie, my right hand lady, she's been my right hand for six out of the seven years. And she's been through literally everything with me. And when we were in London just this past week, we were talking about, um, I, I did a TikTok actually about like, you know, you call it mommy porn, but it's this, right. Mm-hmm. And she was like, it's, it's literally changed my life. No. Like, and she saw, I know. And I'm just like, like, like just to lean on somebody to, she's been in therapy. I've been in therapy. We both re- like, like, there's just so much that has bonded us in this. And, and it wouldn't exist 
if I didn't just keep going. Cause I have thought about quitting so many times. She's actually the one who told me to put myself out there and to be transparent. Cause before her, I just had a teacup in front of my face and that was my picture. And people thought it was a stock photo. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. she, I, I remember asking her saying like, well, what if they don't like me? And she was like, they're going to love you. Mm-hmm. And love she's, you. she's yeah. mostly right. Most <laughs> people don't like me, but that's okay. They were never going to like me. I'm yeah, still the you same can't. person. Yeah. yeah. Right. So it's just a matter of how much of me they know and how comfortable I am with myself. Right. So that's it's better. Cause them. then you, you draw in the better people. Cause yes. I have that. I've always had that natural instinct. I was young and like, I always wanted good friends, but I was not built for like high school because I, I always wanted really like my friends are my family. So it was me like meeting you as soon as you get past, like, I was like, Oh, we're going to be friends. Like yes, it literally just has that. If you it, can drink at the bar that. and you have a great time <laughs> and you talk about literally anything without yeah, like, yeah. like, I'm like good people, good people. Good people. Yeah. Yes. And I, and like back you up 100%. I'm like, I'll go down fighting girl. Um, <laughs> don't, don't. People think because I'm tall, I'm a good fighter. I'm like, I'd be like, <laughs> I'm an ankle biter. I'm short, so I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> I'll be a wrist biter. Arr, arr, arr. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like barbecue sauce. Arr, arr. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. my good, I can't name one because it's all those things. It's every time oh, somebody comes up to me and says, you know, your books have like it just made me want to write or made me want to like, you know, just there's so many moments that I'm like sitting there at my table, like I'll be like no, that's okay. Like I'm not crying. Yes, I am. You know, yeah. like I'm such a wuss. Like I just, there's such beautiful moments and there's so many mo- majority. I, there wasn't like the last signing. I know there was some drama at the event. I mean, there's, there's um, always drama at, I, th- I feel like every event also, but yeah, yeah. I didn't even yeah. see any of the drama. I feel like I we mean, were I had had nothing. Bubble, every, right? every single yeah. person that came up to me, I like it, it, yeah. wonderful. There Absolutely are so- the best people. There were 2,700 readers at that event. And if you're going to have that many people in a space, there's, there's going to be some negativity. So I don't think it was the event. I think it was just, well, I think it was a couple of bad eggs that didn't behave themselves and were feral. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Like somebody pushed a pregnant woman. Like that, that's not something anybody pocketed from someone that was disabled. Oh my so, God. Yeah. I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Some people, it's I mean, that's, like, that's kind of like the, just the, the theme of tonight's episode though. Some people are just going to be awful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and, yeah. but yeah, like we're in our happy little bubble and that's great, but we definitely need to be there. I think for the people who do get, um, pickpocketed and, and, mm-hmm. and all that, like, I, yeah. that's awful. So I don't mm-hmm. want to minimize. I yeah. certainly don't want to yeah. minimize that. Yeah. I think it was, it was that one woman like that really stuck out. Cause I was really new. It was like, I was like, I'll oh, maybe be my th- Oh no, I think it was on collector series. So I was at least through my first series and I was at a comic con and, but I felt like, I mean, I was a nobody. I felt like, and she just came up to me and she had, you know, like she couldn't walk or anything like that. And she was the one that said like pretty much 24 seven, she was in her bed paralyzed with um, pain. Like she had all these chronic illnesses and she's like, I picked up one of your books, the last comic con and I've now taken them all and they make like, I feel happy. I feel like I don't feel pain. And I was just like, I think I just started crying because she's just like, it was the one moment in my life that I felt peace that I could read. And I didn't, you know, and I'm like, oh my God, like, you know, cause you don't like you read these and you're like, most of the time you feel like you take the negative in the sense it's just mommy porn or, you know, so you mm-hmm. take this, like, I'm not, you know, brain surgery or whatever. And that, but when you hear that you've changed, affected somebody's life over your, what you wrote. Oh, like I, I sometimes I'm like, I need to sit out, <laughs> you know, like that kind of feeling is so overwhelming to us and it never gets old. It never changes my feeling of like, really? Like, I'm still always shocked. I'm always like, wait, what? You know, like you yeah. like, you really like <laughs> <laughs> do my it quotes. Amazing. Sally Field. It really is. Yeah. And there's so many more of those instances yeah. than anything negative. Like yes. it, it oh. really is fueling. I mean, how, how are you in like still today? I get when people actually get like really nervous and are shaking when they come up to your table and I'm still looking around going, what are you <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like me, like, and it's just, it's so crazy to live in the, like that when you live in yeah. that part of the bubble, you're like, holy crap. Cause most of the time, you know, we are at home, like drooling yeah. on our tops and have a coffee Literally. stand from two days ago. And yeah. like my dog's puking on the floor over here, or, you know, it's just like, <laughs> So when you go these times and people are like shaking and like, are so excited to meet you, it just, some, uh, sometimes it's like that 
it mm-hmm. is the moment you're like this, you are why I do this, why Literally. I am like, I will, whatever I need to do, I will fight. And that was like, I realized when I was going through design school and stuff like that, I loved it. I was good at it. I wouldn't fight for it. I was like, when I was writing, I was like, I will live and die for this. Like I knew whatever it took, no matter how many people bash me because acting was too personal to me. That became like, oh, you have a fat circle here and you're, you're too tall and you have too long a face, you know? Oh, I was, I mean, the prettiest girl in LA feels ugly there. I mean, it's just, mm-hmm. it's after a while, it's very degrading. So this was like something that I'm like, I will do anything. And I don't care if people hate it. I'm going to still like try to, you know, advance and, you know, get better and keep going. And um, people always talk about their first book that they hide under the bed. And I'm like, my first book is darkness of light. I don't have anything hidden under my bed. And so it was just amazing that right away, I felt like I was just welcomed into this world. And, you know, and every time, of course, I'm going to hopefully advance and get better at it and stuff like that. But it's just, I'm always odd of this industry. Like the good of it is just it is you know. the, yeah. the bad of it, even with, when you're talking about, you know, the, the way that you look and that being criticized, that also happens. And I was shocked. I have a, an author friend who's a woman of color and I was on TikTok and I'm, you know, I'm doing great on it. And she told me that she was afraid to get on there because she, she didn't want to get hit with racism and put her, her yeah. likeness out there. And I said, no, don't worry. Like everything's going to be great. It's so wonderful out here. The very first day she got called the N word. Yeah. And I just, um, I was like, so taken aback because I couldn't believe it. But then again, like, I'm not a woman of color, right? I'm never going to mm-hmm. experience no. those experiences. And I just felt awful. And she has stayed on the platform and everything, but like, like, I just can't imagine. The growth is getting better. But at first um, I, yeah. I knew so many authors that were of color and wrote white girls in their books mm-hmm. as they didn't want right. to be like that, you know, they thought like, this is the safest I'll get money this way. Nobody will know. And I'll keep in the background. And it, we, as white girl never had to worry about that. And Correct. it's just like, we'll get, we'll get into that episode down the road, but yeah, it, it's definitely. just, you know, there is again, that that's fucking ugly. Like if we yeah. want to get to the fucking ugly of yeah. that, it like, is the fucking ugly. It is the, fucking but people ugly do sure. expect you, you can't say that when you walk in and you're reading somebody's hot scenes that you always do the package, you know, you walk in, you look beautiful at signing events, you know, and there is something to say that people want the visual with it. They mm-hmm. want, you know, if you look cute, if you write cute, you know, if you have these, you are much more the package deal. Like, again, it, it reminds me of like singers now where before they could be ugly back in the day, but they had a beautiful voice. It didn't matter. Now it's like, mm-hmm. they don't care if they auto tune them. They just want them to look a certain way, you know? And right. it's just like, I feel authors have kind of like, because we have to be now so much mm-hmm. more on social media that you have to be also this. Right. Your appearance of, is part of the package yeah. that sells. It's much easier if you show yourself because people, readers want to know you're a real person and oh, they yeah. know that they yeah. connect with you for sure. It definitely makes it easier. Yeah. Cause like the Stephen Kings and all of them could hide in the background back in the day in the houses, they mm-hmm. never had to show their face. Now we have to be like, always out there every day. We have to push something on Instagram or TikTok or, and I'm not, I'm okay. definitely like, this is awkward for me. I definitely like being in the back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want to be in the background. I like so. being out front. And I, I, again, that's how we're so different. Like I, yeah, yeah I love being like, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> like, I like, I, I don't, I don't know why I think it, maybe it well, is my acts of service love language. Yeah. Like I feel I like I'm doing good. It's not that it's, um, I think it's my own personal trauma of LA. I don't think I visually, yeah. I'm not, I will always criticize myself. I will never like what I look like. So I'll sit there and pit point it. You are of, gorgeous. You yes, are downright is. gorgeous. <laughs> okay. I wasn't looking for that. I'm just saying that that's, <laughs> a lot of people have that same thing where like, I'm much more comfortable behind the scenes in my book because that personal trauma in my head is I will never see me what I want to see me as. Like, you know, the why I always picture like me as a leading lady as somebody else. I'm not actually me. <laughs> I'm somebody really hot. You know? <laughs> so it's just like, so it, it's just funny how like this kind of thing though makes you have to show yourself more mm-hmm. out there. They want to that whole package. They want to be access to you, you know, and that's, there is good and bad in that too. That's not fucking ugly, but it's the, there's a bad of like needing mm-hmm. to constantly be out on all social media all the time marketing, you know, where you're like, 100%. I just want to write my book. Yeah. <laughs> the day I used to be just to write my book. I think that that is where we could definitely bring in other authors and get mm-hmm. their yeah, opinions and their perspectives and their, their experiences. And I think in the next episode, 
What do you like? Let's bring somebody oh, I in. I think we already have yeah. somebody in line for that. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be good. <laughs> so what do you guys, let's then do that next time. Yeah. That sounds you guys have enjoyed hard. this. Yes. Start, stop. Yes. Please give us your feedback. If you're liking these, if you want more or less. Yes, follow, follow us, for more. <laughs> like, and there'll be definitely later things that you'll get more behind the scenes with us. So, but please yeah. let us know how we're doing so far. I know it's only two episodes in, we're yeah. still getting the bugs out, but hopefully you guys if, are enjoying this. If you don't enjoy it and you hate us, you don't have to comment that. Just to- yeah. <laughs> don't make us sad. We like positive, remember? Yeah, <laughs> emoji sad face. <laughs> I, but so, uh, we would love to get feedback if you guys want topics. What topics do you want? You know, yes. like you, what something out there you? that you have been dying yes. to be like, I need to know that, you know, the good, bad, and ugly. Because we're there isn't a topic we are not going to talk about. We yes. might, you know, have to bring in people for other topics, but bring it on. Also, what do you there's an hear? author, a, a guest author that you would like to see come on. We can try and make that happen. Mm-hmm. So, all, all right, right, guys. I think this has been a great time. Yeah. See, see you, you next week. time. All right. Bye.